Hi everyone, it's the 7th of August, um, so it's what, 10, 11 days since I've been down to the allotment. I'll come down, <coughs> see what script is with these onions and whatnot. Uh, spuds look like they've got a little bit of blight on them, but um, they'll have to sit it out for a few days. I'll put a spray on them today just to kill any excess spores, but you know, I think that looks like it's starting. There's a couple of plots on here that have got it quite bad. So uh, I'll just give these a quick spray over after. I can find a proper leaf somewhere. I'll, I'll try and show you. <coughs> um, like here. So you've got that. You know, and you, it gets like rings on the back of it and a little bit of white mould. I'll probably come down in uh, about two or three days, get the tops off these. <coughs> and then so I mean, it's, it's fairly blighted in that area. Like I say, it's inevitable. It, it always comes here because it's kind of a potato growing sort of country over this neck of woods. You know, um, Pellin is well known for its potatoes. It's miles and miles of land that grows potatoes over here, so it's inevitable everyone tends to get it. And I go like I do with spray it to try and <coughs> slow it down a bit, but it's hard to spray. Um, you know when it's just dense to get you know on you know on top and under it's only a prevention you can't really cure it so that's another day to deal with um, we've got a few dry days which helps um, I say it was supposed to be dry last night but it's rained through the night which I didn't really want it to do so have a look quick look round so all, all the paths have uh, died back now um, Turks turban um, a couple of pumpkins down there are a bit slow but uh, a few squash on here, I think they've set, no mushy bottoms on them, they're about sort of grapefruit size, so I'll leave them be, <coughs> excuse me, look down this end, I've not even looked myself, to be honest, um, beans, i have to just uh, pull the top off that one up there, encourage it to send some lower shoots out, there's probably a few more to pick on here, you know, that, that, a few. Oh, finally, a ladybird. <coughs> um, asparagus, just doing its thing really, it'll do its thing until it dies back. The peas, they're all looking a bit better and a bit more upright. So when I come down in a few days, I'll put a string against them to get them all back to, to the net. Uh, majority of the onions have now toppled so they're coming out and I can get them home and uh, cleaned up and start the drying process but I can't really put them on the rack because I've still got my brassicas there which will come out in a few days so I'll just have to brave it sort of like on the patio for a few days these. <coughs> um, courgettes are looking pretty big plants and uh, oh, a few courgettes on them there's a whopper one over there, deal with that after. I need to sort of like think about it because I need to start wrapping these at the bottom really, you know, some cardboard or, you know, to uh, start the blanching process and give them a right good flooding of water. Um, try and avoid them getting too stringy. There you go, daddy long legs, that's where the leather jacket comes from. But, uh, all in all, I mean, there's a little side shoot type thing down here but uh, no, I'm not worried about it because I, I tend to use it chopped up in sauces and that <coughs> uh, someone's been having to go out a few of the beans whether it's slugs or pigeons I don't know but uh, what will be will be with them as for these two down to the brassicas everything seems to have perked up a little bit by the look of it <coughs> A bit of weeds, you know, a few weeds in there. Um, you're going to get in this sort of time here because you've got that sort of warm weather and moisture, so it's ideal sort of growing conditions for weeds and everything. So, uh, but other than that, it seems to be going okay. You know, leaves are holy at the bottom, but the ones at the top seem okay. So I'm quite convinced there's nothing bug-wise in there bad at the moment. <coughs> um, cauliflower, they're doing okay. These three are starting to pick up down here. 
Um, let's have a look at the Swede. That's looking a bit, uh, a bit holy, whether it's aphids or something like that, really chomping at the back of the leaves, I don't know. But um, deal with that when I take the net off and put a full net over. <coughs> I'm going to spray with some soapy solution or something like that. Sweet corn, ain't going to be, it's just got no height on it really, they say. You know, and uh, <coughs> whether the, the, the pollination's good on it, I've no idea, so. The ones at the back don't look too bad, but like I say, it just depends. If they pollinate okay and they get plenty of sort of water to make the kernels swell up, and we'll just get what we get off them. And then, uh, I don't know what I'm going to put in that bed next year. Just might be something, because the lettuce did alright early on in the year, so I, might, I don't know, might just put like courgettes or something in that next year. Uh, but that's next year anyway. Right, so all I'm going to do today is harvest some blueberries, some French climbing beans, and uh, get these onions out. And some flowers, you can see all the distance too. You know, they're starting to form ahead, not opened yet, so I imagine in a couple of weeks they'll, uh, they'll open. They're not the highest, they're probably what, seven, seven, eight foot, something like that, but uh, they'll do. Right, so we'll get all these out and um, probably just load them up in the wheelbarrow and then we'll have a look at them back at home. I'm hoping this ground is fairly soft, they'll just pull out, but I uh, don't want to uh, sort of knacker up the basil plate. So we shall uh, just see. Yeah, I'll get a little fork to loosen it up. <coughs> just in case they're trying to get as, as much of the mud off. As you possibly can for now. Once I've had a sort of a couple of days sort of drying out a little bit, where the roots have started to dry a bit, then I'll take them back to one skin and get rid of all the mud. And that's when you can have a good look at uh, you know anything that's looking a bit like it's not going to store too well, and then. Uh, you can chop and freeze that or use them up as you like. <coughs> but uh, don't seem too bad considering that I thought I'd possibly lose them all, so it's all a, a good bonus. No, I can't grow one this year, it's been, been a, one of the best growing years I've had for a while to be honest. Key thing is time, having the time to do it. You know, because uh, <coughs> no work, no band or anything. That starts back up tomorrow, the band. But, uh, we're actually minus a drummer now. So we're on the look lookout, but it's not worth looking at the moment really because. Uh, all the lockdown issues are still uh, sort of restricting any chance of a live performance so <coughs> we'll just have to see how it goes. I won't bore you with uh, lifting all these so we'll have a bit of a look at them at the end either here or at home. I was going to be able to split it, but I'll get rid of all that bad stuff and uh, get it back to a, a little onion. That's from when they start to get a skin on in the ground, and all of a sudden they get a big gulp of water. So I'll just go along you and like force fold any next. <coughs> then it's sort of stack them in such a way to try and get you know at an angle that's as much water comes out the neck as possible if you've got like a good few sunny days with a nice breeze that's uh, that's the best thing really 
Right, I shall carry on doing these. Right, so that's uh, today's harvest. All the onions, some courgettes, and that great bloody thing there. Um, blueberries and some of the cobra beans. I'm going to leave my fruit cage open now. There's not so many left, so the birds can go in and have a clear up now. You know, because obviously they get the uh, little blueberry maggot and stuff like that, so don't bother me. I just cook them down into a sauce. You know, I'll, I'll pick out what I can, you know, want to eat. And the rest just gets uh, cooked down into like a blueberry sauce for topping cheesecakes off with. So uh, I'm not going to bother clearing this bed. I'll, I'll, say I'll get the onions out, but I want to. I'm going to make a start on clearing them uh, potato tops. I think. You know, have a good mad half hour, get them cleared, and then uh, dig them up in a few days or a week or something like that. That's all the all the tops cut off. What they like, I've no idea. There's a couple that were poking out a little bit, so I've kind of pushed them back in. But what I have done, just a precaution, I mixed some uh, blight spray up and I've sprayed the mounds. Because um, there was a couple that were quite blighted, so I've cut the harms right as low to the soil as I can. I thought I'd give it a good coat with blight spray, just in case any spores sat on the soil, just to uh, try and eliminate them a little bit. But uh, I would have liked them to have a little bit longer. That's just the way it goes, you know, so you get as long as you can. This should, there'll be some under there, you know. Um, I just hope the slugs leave them alone, they don't get holy or anything. But I'll try and get them up as soon as I can. But ideally, a few dry days to dry the soil out a bit, and then uh, I can come and, come and dig them up. You know, it'll probably take me about you know, three quarters of an hour to dig them two up, and then decide what I'm putting in this bed. You know, whether I'm just going to cover it with a plastic sheet or you know, sort of scuff it about and put some sort of green manure on it. I've no idea yet. Um, so I'm going to haul all them onions into the wheelbarrow and get them over to the van and everything else and uh, get myself home. And we'll have a look at the onions uh, in a day or two. Right, it's the 9th of August now, so they've had a few days since I cut the tops off. I think it was a 6, I think I cut the tops off. So, um, thought had a few days dry weather so I'll dig them up because it's forecast like really bad rain for the next couple of days so this is the orla could have done with a bit longer but I get what I get I'm not too bad I've had a bit of a rake out on the rest of the bed just to even it out a bit and um, kind of move the uh, the squash the turk turban to, to kind of grow across the potato bed now a bit and just hold it up either side that which you'll probably see at some point so um, I've got as much sort of in in the shot as possible because I've forgotten my attachment for the tripod so you're currently propped on a, a bit of cane that's slotted into the end of a rake sort of balanced so uh, not looking forward to digging because I hate digging but uh, we get what we get so, uh, so where do you start hopefully there'll be uh, something all right anyway Well, uh, they're plenty big enough anyway. Well, if uh, they're all like that, I'll be uh, pretty damn chuffed. There's another one here. Well, big buggers, them. Um. Got some jacket spuds. A smaller one. I don't mind if I get quite a few big ones, to be honest. Trying to stab too many. A few small ones near the top, but it's another big one. It's had a bit of a split on that one. You know, which sometimes calls through where uh, you know a dry spell, followed by an absolute downpour. But uh, all is usually done all right. I mean, last year slugs got the better of them so that's why I've decided to not leave them in for days and days and days and just get them out oh I think I nearly oh I hit one then they're quite deep down these
What have we got? Oh, five pound of spuds just here. Off this. this area. Just trying to be a bit more careful digging up with them being so big. spuds to be honest. You always lose a few but at fork or like that one. They're a good size spud these. I'll weigh them when I get home. Bless you they all end up like that. Yeah. I'll go and get my bucket. It's warm, it's about 25 degrees or something. It's a little bit too hot for me digging, but uh, it's one of the jobs that's got to be done. I thought boy you were digging all these up so I'll just get on there, get the rest of these two rolls up and uh, we'll have a look at that then. That's them two rolls dug up so there's no more spuds to dig up, thank god. Uh, there's quite a few that have rotted a bit. You know, it's, a, it's a shame because some of them are a decent size as well, you know, that that's a go. Some real weird shaped ones as well, I mean, look at that, that's like one potato. It's kind of, it's gone in the middle. It's done that, you know, squishy uh, blight or something that's got into him. Uh, the weird looking thing there. You know, a few little holes in him, um, which are slugs, you know. But uh, I can't grumble, they're still, I don't know how, I wouldn't like to say how much of his weight wise there, but uh, and, uh, get them all. I might rinse them off here or rinse them off at home. I've got some beans to pick, uh, just a few. but. Um, so there's plenty along here. I've got a real weird shape on somewhere, is it? Uh, here, this thing. Look at that for a weird shape thing. Looks like some sort of bath toy type thing. Or something, you know? Old man, whatever. Um, but yeah, there's, there's plenty of, uh, you know, good size spuds. Little holes, we can see there. But uh, it's slugs. You know, I've, I've picked a few open and it's just a little tiny black slug. You know, same as that slug also. When I go, th when I go through them, all these ones will get uh, chopped up and chipped and whatnot. So plenty of chips because all they make really good chips, which is why I like them. They're just a good all-rounder. Um, but I might seriously think about resting this bed for potatoes next year. I mean, because it's had spuds growing it now for what, eight, eight years. So I might, uh, I might just do a few first earlies and do something else with this bed next year. Don't know what yet, but uh, I might even do broad beans. Not a fan, but i find something for them. But it's just something to uh, rest the soil a bit for a season maybe. But like I said, I've said that before and I've ended up growing spuds again. So I don't know. I'll see what happens next year for that. But that's the orla. So all that's left to... Uh, do a harvest on potato wise now is I've got a tub of jazzies, my King Edwards and my South Palmyra's at home which are all in tubs which will be coming up uh, probably in the next few weeks I should imagine 
You know, because Blight's at the King Edward's a bit at home, but nothing major. A little bit on the Sarpo mirrors as well, but nothing nothing too out of control at the minute, thank God. But we are due massive downpours and thunderstorms. Right, so I'll carry on and go and get this lot home, and I'll uh, I'll get these lot weighed, and then I'll put that in the description. All right, it's over a week since uh, I pulled up these uh, onions. So we've had nothing, we've had thunderstorms, lightning, and all sorts. Loads of rain, it's been raining this morning, so I've just been coming out, peeling skins off a few, ready to, you know, get them ready for storing. They're just slowly drying out under here. Um, I put this black membrane on there just to give them a bit of shade because a few of the days it got really hot. So it just helps to uh, sort of protect them a little bit. So all it is is like so, I mean, you kind of just peel them back to a single clean skin. Um, so it's a bit patchy because I've just been like coming out when I've got a chance and just grabbing all this grab a tub. So you know if it's got a, you know a fairly decent skin on it already underneath, that's not too bad. Sometimes when you peel that first layer off, you'll see, you know, uh, marks and things are a little split. But fortunately, that one's not too bad. It's a bit time-consuming. You know, well, that's, that's not so bad when you just sort of pop out and do a few each day. You know, and then, uh, probably take another three or four weeks depending on the weather. Just trying to get the uh, good airflow. Ideally, I'd like to leave the cover off like this, you know, get a nice warm, breezy day. It's, it's fairly bright, but not but beaming not sunshine on them. And uh, most of them will store fine. You know, it's like it's got some marks on it. So I'll do, I'll go up to the next sort of top and just peel that back get it back to a nice single skin I've pulled my uh, Kelsey onions up um, just kind of hung them upside down to get some water out of the neck because they were really really wet and I've, I've peeled them back to a clean skin um, they did have a there's quite a few they'll probably not store for very long at all, so they'll just get chopped and froze. And it's just just making sure, I mean, because they're quite chunky near the neck, just keep pressing it down a bit, because you want it to try and dry really close to the actual onion. And then next stage, we want these are all turned to complete like paper, and we trim the roots off, trim the top off, about yay, about you know a couple of inch, and then just string them from there. So I'll uh, cover these back over in a minute. I think it's going to pour it down pretty soon because the sky is very grey. <coughs> so we'll have a look at the uh, Kelsey onions while we're at it. Maybe a quick look around the garden. Right, Kelsey onions are on this makeshift sort of shelter. I just basically put uh, a couple of canes um, rested on some bits of copper pipe that just kind of fit into the uh, concrete fence posts because they have these pre-drilled holes in. So. Put some copper there, a couple of canes going along. Um, I don't know how well you'll see them, but I'll try and pump, see if I can get one out. Try to. Bear with me a second. So that's uh, one there. They all sort of average about sort of three and three, four, well, three to four pounds, most of them. So not massive, but I don't know how many years, quite a few. There's going to be a lot of onion, you know. So this this stuff will get chopped. Most of this, I mean, that won't store at all. You can see, oh, well, like you can see, like the bad marks on it there. But uh, the necks have dried out quite a bit. So just uh, somewhere to get them dried off. Uh, I'll look at garlic because that's uh, not so far off. Ready now. Um. There's something if you remember out that it sent the um, garlic scape out 
so the necks are rock hard so they'll get used up first I'll reach right under here you know here's the garlic and uh, it's nearly it's still got a bit of flex in it but it's not so far off you know um, but I'll probably leave it a couple of weeks and then I'll uh, string them <coughs> have a look around the rest of the garden so of course yeah it's uh, a bit bleak really but, uh, they're still putting out courgettes so until they stop I'll, I'll keep them going this mazure is starting to uh, all sort of bolt now it's just had a lot of rain I've not had a chance to get out and harvest some I don't really need because we've still got a load in the fridge um, I've been picking the uh, cobra beans absolutely plenty on them I mean uh, Jack's been nipping a few off the top as well so I'm going to worry about pinching them off when they hit the top because uh, Jack's been doing that for me because he's currently uh, sat on the fence post there at the minute. So what else is a uh, um, polytunnel? Give that a bit of a tidy up yesterday, a bit of a water and whatnot, and uh, took some more foliage off. Took a lot of tomatoes out, so I'm getting ready to make some sauce pretty soon. So I'll probably do a little video on that because people have asked you know about. You know how I make the tomato sauce and stuff like that they use for cooking so I might knock some it together try and pick out some uh, monkey carrots because them sweet candle all the tips are rotten on them so I'll probably use them to be honest um, what else have I done got some uh, 12 litre pots there and all I've done I've stuck a, <coughs> a really old wrinkly jazzy seed potato in each one and I've just my own compost and just capped it with a little bit of manure and some grass clippings and they're so, the so-called Christmas buds it's a bit late but um, they'll probably do summer if not they'll produce small potatoes as long as they clean up using seed potatoes next year uh, tender green yeah they're all right I wouldn't say they're like a French climb bean at all really they're just like a runner bean but they're, they're all right to be honest um, so I don't know how you can make it out but it's obviously you know, hanging in them, so I need to pick a load of them. Brussels sprouts, could probably do a top in a few of these because they're going to hit the top of the net. But there are plenty of sprouts on, you know, some of them are over an inch now, so I'll probably start taking some of them to be honest. Or here, uh, slugs are having a good go at the greens and the uh, little gems down the bottom end uh, cucumber house since I took the shelf out cucumbers have like I thought they would be sort of, apart from that one that's just been riddled with a white fly in here but cucumbers have come back to life and just grown you know it's just because having that shelf here I've cut some peppers off you know because I've had uh, quite a few of the old bell peppers um, so I'll leave them to just do their, th you know, thing and the bullhorn ones. Yeah, they've uh, they've been all right. I uh, can't see any mini cobs yet appearing on these, so it shouldn't be long. No, I'm not because they're like nearly six foot high now. Then. Uh, what else we got? Just turn the camera around a bit. The big carrots, which I've no idea how they're doing. Um, not got long now and I'll probably pull them then we've got some more spuds down I think I think they were Duke of Yorks then I think I've just put two in um, look at the King Edwards in a minute because I've got blight uh, dwarf French beans are coming on alright it's Mizuna I need to start using that um, that lettuce is, is starting to go a bit over really so I need to sort that out and uh, start using that as with that Mazur over there Celery, I'll start taking some of that soon for making sauce with. It's not massive, but it's just a little gap filler. Um, I've put some other bits in, but pigeons have been pecking it. The rocket's starting to show. And then where the big onions were, I found some leeks that I had left over. So I've just shoved some leeks in over there for now. So I've got a big empty gap here with nothing to put in. So I've sold some more seeds. If they do all right, fine. If they don't, then I'll cover the ground up because... Um, I've had a good year veg wise to be honest and uh, a rest would be nice so I just want something just to 
tickle over till the season sort of comes to an end and that, that'll do me for this year. Alright, onto these uh, King Eddies. Uh, there will be another reveal, um, but not in this video, because I need to get these tops off because uh, well, you can tell, you know, lights here. Like that. For those of you not sure what blight looks like, no way you can make that out, but that's that's your telltale sign of blight. So it's uh, it's here, you know, all all over these leaves as well, all down there. There'll be a few stems. It's been here for a week or two, but uh, so I've not I've not been spraying these for a bit. I did all I did. I went and uh, put a little bit of manure around the tops of the pots, just to try and protect the tubers a bit. So I don't know how well they're going to be because they were really hard to water these this year. Um, but like I said, there'll be another reveal. So I've got plenty of spuds because I had only £127 of Orla in the end I got from the plot. And I thought, oh, I'd probably, you know, £60 maybe, something like that. I got back and I sorted through them all and I weighed them and I thought, Christ, they've done all right. So I've had. Um, Probably if I've, I've included what I've, what I've thrown away, I've had over £300 of spuds from plot. And then I've got this lot to harvest here as well. So uh, that's about it. Really in the garden. Um, Sarpo mirrors. Um, I think they've got bits of dribs and drabs of blight, but they're, uh, they're not too bad. The actual tubs are starting to feel a bit lumpy now, so it's either you know, a, a cluster of potatoes or there's going to be some biggins in there, I have no idea. But uh, I'll leave them be for a bit. Hello, we've got a visitor. So, I don't know where you can make out, but behind me there the sky is pretty grey. So I'm not going to be doing much today, I might go and pick some beans and that, but uh, it's a bit hard because this fella keeps uh, following me around and he's seen me uh, picking beans. So he just likes to help out and pick them and throw them about and rip them to pieces so uh, that's it for this update so the next one will there'll be potato reveals so thanks for watching take care we'll see you next time bye uh, can you uh, leave some beans for me don't need your help Come on. Come on. Can you stop eating him? Get off. Mind that, the man. Get off, Jack. Will you, bugger? Come there.